Well, it, it's not working in prod. Indeed, it's not working in prod. Well, it's not my problem. It works just fine on my machine and on the dev server. Well? Well, I told you all systems are ISOs. And if it's working in dev, it's working in prod. It's ISO? Oh, yeah. Essentially, I mean, pretty much almost. Almost? What do you mean, almost? Me, uh, you know, there's maybe a very small gap in minor versions. And for some plugins. Nothing particularly important. The video never gets old. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello. to today's show. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, good to see everybody in chat. If you want, please uh, give a shout out where you're at in the world. Love to see uh, where everybody's at tuning in. But today, I got two of my favorite people here at Docker, the PM team. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. good. We're holding up. It's been a busy yeah, week. Yeah, very good. A little busy week. Some things going on here at Docker. But anyways, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Yui, why don't you introduce yourself? You don't mind? Tell everybody who you are. Yeah, um, I'm Yui Kao, Senior Director of Product Management here at Docker. I'm out on the West Coast uh, in South San Francisco. Um, I've been at Docker since uh, just December this past year. Um, although someone told me that's almost a year now at Docker. Um, and before that, uh, I, I was at uh, Pivotal and VMware working on Cloud Foundry. Awesome. Ben, how are you? Welcome to the show. Tell everybody Good. who you are, what you do. I'm Ben. I'm one of the product managers here at Docker. I've been at Docker for about two and a half years, heading on for three years now, actually. Um, I've worked on most of the products at Docker now. Um, prior to that, I worked at Amazon on Alexa, working on the bit where if you say, what's the capital of France? Hopefully she says Paris. Um, and then prior to that, I was at Microsoft for five years. Wow, Microsoft five years. All right, let's not go into that. No, we've talked about that before. Awesome. Yep. Well, yeah, we got some, we got some uh, exciting things going on this week here at Docker, some big announcements. Yeah. How, yeah. how are you feeling? How, how's Thank everybody? You. Yeah, a lot of chatter on the internet. So we wanted to, I wanted to have you guys on so we can, you know, answer some questions and, and go through some some things. But um, yeah, where, where do we want to start? Do we just want to dive in, jump right into it? Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, oh, we have Eric Smalling on. Hi, Eric. Good to see you. <laughs> one, one of my best buddies with uh, fellow Texan. So I had to I had to give a shout out there. But all right. Sorry. Sorry, you. That's all right. Um, yeah, no, I, I think we we um, we announced a number of things this week. Um, so we um, announced our, our uh, changes to to our subscriptions. So um, we now have uh, Docker Personal, Docker Pro, Docker Team, um, Docker Business. Um, as, as our lineup of subscriptions. Docker Business is all new. Docker Personal is kind of the rename of Docker Free. Um, uh, the business tier, um, it's kind of focused on, um, you know, serving the needs of larger companies um, who are uh, trying to, to uh, manage their, their developers' usage of Docker sort of at scale. And so that kind of involves things like um, we're hoping to deliver shortly the the ability to um, do SAML SSO, so you can manage onboarding and offboarding of users. Um, a, a marquee feature that we introduced at at launch was this image access management feature um, that uh, for for uh, companies that aren't comfortable with with their developers, you know, just accessing Docker Hub because of all those crazy stories about all those vulnerabilities. Maybe for, for those companies, um, they can uh, take advantage of this feature and uh, for their developers, uh, restrict their access to just Docker official images, Docker verified publisher images, and then be assured that um, it's not a random, um, a seemingly innocent uh, image <laughs> um, that they copied from, from uh, Stack Overflow that, that really wasn't so innocent at all. Um, yeah. So uh, really excited about that feature and um, hoping uh, and, and, and the interest of uh, uh, those sorts of larger businesses that are a little more hesitant um, to allow people to use Docker Hub uh, to, to allow their developers to use Docker Desktop and yeah. Docker Hub. Um, that's well, a bit about business. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to let me jump in real quick and maybe maybe we'll if you wouldn't mind, can one of you guys kind of explain what, what official images are and DVP, the Docker Verified Publisher, 
just so you know, I know we know, but you know, just making sure our audience is aware of what those are. Yeah, I can I can go. Um, <coughs> I'm also just going to answer Michelle and Ed and Catherine uh, before I kick off. Um, so yeah, you, you guys may have also noticed we uh, was part of the change this week. Um, there was <coughs> a change to the terms for Docker Desktop under the personal plan. Um, that is for Docker Desktop, like the bundle of all the stuff when it comes as Docker Desktop. It doesn't affect the standalone binaries for the Docker runtime, so Docker engine, or the standalone binaries for the Docker CLI. Those are, you can go and download those binaries separately, um, I think, apart well, from download.docker.com, um, but probably easier to find the versions you need from the docs, so docs.docker.com, and those still have the same, same licenses those things have always had that are unaffected by this change. <coughs> So I was choking on my coffee during the intro, so I'm now trying to recover from it. Um, <laughs> good thing the intro also mutes you because it was a complete fail. Yeah. Um, so what are Docker official images and Docker verified publishers? Yeah. Docker official images are, are some of the most popular content that Docker has on Docker Hub. Um, Docker Hub has a lot of users visiting it. Uh, we have people retrieve content from Docker Hub, I think at the moment, over 12 billion times a month. Um, which is pretty cool, um, which is which is very cool. Uh, and in large, a, a big part of that is official images and verified content. So official images are images which are produced by Docker, uh, and they are sort of some of those backbone images that everyone uses. They're the core images that are well-constructed, secure, verified, good content images. They sort of have that big green tick of approval. Um, and they form the foundation of most people's sort of secure build supply chain. Um, and then from the, the verified publishers, these are publishers who we've gone out to and partnered with who've said that they've got good content and they want to share that with the developers in the community. So it's their content that they're saying is good and that we're sort of working with them on to bring the best content we can out to all of you in a way that shows that that content is also good, that it's from real publishers who we can trust and we can actually use that content and feel secure in doing so. Awesome. So yes, uh, Hannah was just asking, will, will this record it, it? It's recorded right now. Although we're live, it'll still live in our YouTube channel. So if you got to run and get back to work, I know we're right in some some folks middle of their day, but yeah, feel free to drop off and then come back. You can watch the recording later. But um, so we get, thank you, Ben. So we get, I get this question a lot. I think there's some court confusion. I'm sure you guys have answered this before, but uh, so if I don't use Docker Hub or Docker Desktop, uh, does it affect me? Does it does it affect me any else? Or can I just no. use, uh, install Docker on Windows without desktop? Yes. So yeah. no, no, it doesn't affect you. Um, if you're just using like Angel on Linux and building all your images completely from scratch, um, so you're using no base, then no, there's no impact to you. If you're using verified or official images, or if I guess if you're using images from a different sort of source of truth, then no, um, there's no, no change to you. Uh, can you install Docker on Windows without desktop. It depends what you mean by Docker. Um, you could use, uh, you yeah, can certainly put the CLI. And yeah, and Windows. And Windows. Yeah. So it means if you're talking about Windows containers, Linux containers. Um, and so you can certainly install the CLI just as a binary. Um, you could then install the engine onto WSL2 and do that plumbing yourself. Um, you could, if you have an enterprise license, use. Um, an enterprise server license, I believe, still. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand enough about that side. I won't talk about that. Um, so you can certainly use the Windows containers um, without, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and then you could set up your own VM and install the Linux engine on there. Yes. Uh, so, so you can do all those things if, if, you're, if you're comfortable doing so. Uh, we feel there there's more value in Docker Desktop uh, above um, just installing those pieces. Um, you know, in terms of just how turnkey the installation is, the the setup of, of volumes, networks, and port bindings, and um, you know the uh, ensuring all of the bits, um, the different uh, CLI tools, um, compose, etc., all kind of compatible with each other. Um, the simple resource configurations um, and understanding like. What, uh, what's taking up space and why why you've suddenly run out of space because of all the containers that, that you're running. Um, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so we, I think, it's think there's more value. Where, yeah, I don't think a lot of people always understand what Docker Desktop is because Docker Desktop isn't just 
like the Docker engine and a magic wand on your Windows machine. Um, Docker Desktop, I guess, is kind of made up of, um, in my head, I always group it into like probably six buckets. Um, the first bit is that just one click installation. Um, and by that, I mean it puts every, all of the things down after this onto your machine in one click. And for a lot of people, pretty reliably. Um, and that, that in itself is quite nice. And along with that, you also get the updates. Um, so it does automatically update, so you can stay up to date and secure. And that, again, is turnkey. There's no manual management of that. Um, what it then puts down on your machine is a very lightweight virtual machine behind the scenes, which has, which then we also do all the plumbing for you. When I say plumbing, I mean we're hooking up the file system and networking. So that's all integrated into your local machine, into your local system. So you can use bind mounts, hooks up all the networking into your local network. So you can access that from your browser natively. And then inside that VM, we install all of the Linux tools you need. So it's not just the engine, it's the engine, it's CLI, it's Compose, it's Docker Scan, it's Build Kit. And we'll be looking at putting more things in there over time as well that provide more value to you. And it's all of those that give you that complete Docker experience and environment. Yeah. Coming back over the top of that, what you then also get is the Docker dashboard, which is user interface over the top of all of that that allows you to interact with it and actually then manage a bunch of that integration as well. So how much resource access does that get? What can, what files are exposed to it? So it adds that layer of security over the top, what files that it can actually reach on your host. So it's not just got access to everything on your host and how much of the, the local resources you want to have running those containers. Along with that, that interface actually gives you more into that. So we've now got sort of the ability to visually manage containers and images and volumes, and we've now got dev environments. We're looking at investing in that as a place to increase your productivity. And then along with all of that, we're looking at what other turnkey, what other sort of one-click installations we can do. For a long time, we've had Kubernetes in there, which allows you in one click to install Kubernetes on your machine on top of everything else. And we're looking to do more of that as well. So desktop is this big, one click that gives you that experience that everyone expects from Docker today. It's And that experience from Docker isn't just the engine. And people have, I think, got a little confused between what is the engine and that one click experience we've been providing for a while. Um, and that's, that's a real difference in when you say, can you just use Docker on a virtual machine? Yeah, you can go and use the engine on a machine and you can install all those bits yourself, but it probably won't be what you expect from Docker. Yeah. I mean, What's really interesting is how, you know, the Docker captains, many of whom are, are you know, all about Linux on the desktop. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Many of our, our Docker captains uh, are, are very interested in uh, Docker desktop for Linux, even though they're comfortable <laughs> using um, Docker Docker on Linux. And, and it's because of that value um, that that uh, Docker desktop experience provides that that they're interested in that and ask us about it in almost every conversation we have with them. <laughs> it's the second highest item on our public roadmap um, with 210, I think, thumbs up at this point, and it's one of the most commented as well. Um, so it is very much sought after for all those reasons that it brings all of that extra value and that we are investing in it to bring more value into there as well um, from from more of those integrations, from more of that wider bundled experience people expect from Docker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is, it's, you're right, Yui, it's great evidence to the fact that it is different from just running Docker on Linux. The fact that people come and ask for a desktop on Linux shows that there is this big, this big difference. Yeah, and it, I think, I think it's important to, to point out to right, some of the history or maybe not to history, the technology, tech, uh, yeah, the tech reasons why, I <laughs> can't say that word this morning, but um, you know, why we have uh, desktop on Windows and Mac, and it's because of you know containerization. The op uses the operating system constructs you know the primitives in the operating system to isolate your processes, right? And those are Linux specific, right? So they're they're not they're present on Mac OS and Windows, and so therefore we have to run a small little VM and make everything nice and seamless for you, right? And so I think some people, not everybody, a lot of people in the community miss that, right? They think, well, why can't I just run you know, the engine natively on Mac. Well, it's because the Linux, it's not a core Linux operating system. It's a BSD version. It's a long yeah. old distro yeah. fork, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the kernels don't match up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's not that we just want to own the Mac and Windows desktop, right? We're trying to help our, you know, community out and our customers out and be, you know, install and use Docker technology super seamless, right? I know that sounds like a sales pitch, but that it really is, right? That is the reason. It's, it's interesting why desktop was first built. 
So back in the day, we had a Docker toolbox, which was what I'd guess describe as like sort of elastic bands, chewing gum, and string um, as an experience around VirtualBox, Docker Machine, Kymatic, and some other bits that kind of sprung it all together and put it on your machine. Um, and we tried to iterate on that, and it turned out to be really hard when you're trying to sort of string multiple components together to produce a simple environment that's repeatable for people to use. So that's why we went back to the drawing board and built the first version of Docker Desktop to actually solve the fact that there are so many bits that you have to bring together and so much plumbing to do that actually trying to string together that plumbing from multiple other tools is pretty hard to make reliable and repeatable. And that's sort of much as that meme of like, you know, ship my desktop to production, that's how Docker was born. That is how desktop was born was how can we actually make this stringing together of all these confusing bits in a packaged experience that is Docker available for Mac and Windows users? And, and that was how desktop was born. Yeah, awesome. Well, maybe um, there was a... SJ oh, by is the way, all so, over answering yeah, all these questions. Yeah, I would just like to point out that, uh, you know, and of course I'm definitely biased here because I work at Docker, but um, yeah, we wanted to come on and talk about these changes, right? And, and you know, address the community and, and help answer all the questions we can. We, re we really do care, right? We want to do what's best for our customer. Evidenced by our uh, Scott Johnson, who is our CEO, is in chat answering a bunch of questions. He's very, very involved, right? So from the top down, we really care about our customers and we really want to do the right thing. So uh, I, I don't know, I guess I'm patting ourselves on the back. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, you know, sometimes that's my job. But and here so I was thought Scott was checking us giving the right answers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to double check, make sure I'm all right, did I answer that right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the the um what's the TLDR, right? Maybe maybe we can give the TLDR of of all these changes that have happened this week. I, I know there's a lot of questions out there and we're we're and it's really not that complicated in my opinion. And I don't mean to beat up anybody, right? But when changes happen, right, people have questions and how's that gonna affect me and right and it it's a it's a very big thing, but maybe we can give like a TLDR of what what really changed this week. I don't know who wants to take that. Don't jump on it both at once, please. <laughs> I think we're both being polite. I was being polite because I just did a bunch of talking, so I was going to let you do it. Yeah. Uh, so so TLDR with with uh, we talked a bit about the business um, to your uh, introduction of Docker Business, but um, the the other side, um, the other the large part of our announcement is about Docker Desktop, and so um, the TLDR there is that it remains free uh, for small businesses. Um, and we define that as being fewer than 250 employees and less than 10 million in annual revenue. Um, and you know, further definition of that is is in the fact where we say that that what we're looking, um, you know, uh, when is that 10 million in revenue? That's uh, your last financial year. Um, so trying to keep it simple um, for 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 people to to understand. Um, it's free for personal use. Um, so if you're using it on your own. Um, developing an app, um, uh, <laughs> doing in interesting things in, in, in your own time, as, as Ian Coldwater <laughs> will but do, um, then then that's also uh, 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 entitled under uh, the Docker personal subscription. Um, education, if you're a teacher, if you're a student, free to use. If you're um, you know taking a course uh, about Docker, um, that's also free to use. Um, if you're uh, if you're an instructor, um, kind of more in a professional environment, that's also free to use. We're not trying to hinder hinder adoption or learning um, about things. If you're uh, interested in in evaluating uh, Docker um, at your at your business, that's also free to use. Um, if you're a non commercial open source uh, project, um, it's also free to use for you as well. Um, where uh, uh, so uh, we we think that adds up to about half of our users um, should should still qualify under uh, Docker Docker Personal as a subscription tier, um, and then uh, it are uh, the terms um, we're, we're asking that if you're uh, a larger business, um, being uh, greater than 250 employees or uh, greater than 10 million in annual revenue, um, that that uh, we believe that. Uh, you should pay for your usage of Docker Desktop. We think that's a fair value exchange. Um, 
that can be as little as $5 a month where your developers just expense Docker desktop to their manager, um, or um, if they uh, find value at the, the um, what we provide in the team tier in terms of sharing um, and, and collaboration, um, that starts as, as at as little as seven dollars a month, and then at the business tier, if you're looking to for for that scale, um, that that starts at twenty one dollars a month. Um, but e any of those uh, plans uh, satisfy the uh, the um, the restriction that that we've put on Docker desktop usage, and all of that um, we have this grace period um, because we know budgeting is is. Uh, uh, can be difficult. Um, so we have the grace period until the end of January for you to uh, uh, fig uh, work within your teams to figure out who's using Docker Desktop, what sort of usage is it, and to work with your procurement departments. And so if you have any questions about any of that, any invoicing, uh, just contact our sales team and, and they can help work, work you through it. Um, we have um, volume pricing for, for those who are, are at um, a much larger scales. Um, so those are all things that, that you can reach out to our sales team and they can help answer your questions. Yeah, I think that one of the things we've not chatted about on the business tier either is we've chatted a little bit about what we've got now. Um, but obviously, it's very new. Uh, and that next feature being uh, sound less or so is sort of that and the restricted image access is part of where along with sort of the official images and verified content, we're as a company investing in a lot more of the sort of secure supply chain features going from sort of the developer's desktop up through into the enterprise side of into the into more of the ops side with those with the official and verified images which are used a lot of the time in production um and that's where we're also investing a lot in that business tier and that's sort of the other part of the announcement that we also had this week is that we are going to be kind of tripling down doubling down we've already done a lot in that space with the official images but we'll have a lot more coming there, which helps you actually stay secure starting from that developer desktop. And again, that restricted image is part of that from the enterprise. We already had things like the scanning in desktop and the scanning in Docker Hub, but we'll be adding a lot more to that with new features, such as sort of keeping images up to date on the desktop, looking at how we provide better verification of images and their provenance, and how we're going to feed that through from the desktop into those sort of CI workloads to help you actually keep the whole supply chain secure as part of your, your developer through to production flow yeah and so I, I don't know how much i want to ask questions about features I'm, I'm excited about some of the business features right be able to manage what see what your development team's working on what images they're pulling what's up to date what's what has vulnerabilities possibly right are we or or is the product team thinking about maybe tying in some scanning vulnerabilities and um restricting access based on some of those rules or anything like that just I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll give you an open question. I didn't, we we didn't talk about that offline. See, so we're just going live here, crazy. That's, that's quite okay. Uh, if you check out the public roadmap, I popped in. I think four or five new ideas that we've been approached about around the business tier at the top of the roadmap already. Um, one of them was uh, reporting vulnerabilities in desktop. Um, so, what vulnerabilities are on my desktops? Uh, another one, sort of just like logging of dangerous looking events in desktop. Um, the control of the desktop settings. So what mounts and volumes? Uh, what uh, local file system I'm mounting, make sure you're not mounting secure drives, um, make sure you are using our proxy. <clears throat> so we've got a bunch of these ideas already, but we'd love people's input. If you are, <clears throat> are a customer, if you are someone that works in that sort of role where you're concerned about those things, we'd love your feedback on what would help help you and help your business consume desktop in a more secure fashion for how you work. Yeah. Yeah, and I will say real quickly, um, you know, if, if those are not people out there that are not that are using desktop now and not finding value to pay for it, but like we, we would love to talk to you, I think, right? And understand what value could we provide, right? What are we missing? What what do we do need to do better? What do we do need to do more of, right? Um, and so jump jump into our community Slack. That's a great place to interact with us. Um, like I said, I know these these Great folks here are, are in there. I know our CEO is in there. Our engineers are in there, uh, and our captains, community leaders, right? But please jump in there, uh, ask your questions. Um, I see uh, constantly the PM team reach out and say, "Hey, that's a great question, or that's a great problem. Would you mind jumping on a call with me? Let's talk about that, right?" So we we definitely are interested in talking to the community. Um, so yeah, join our Slack, and then the roadmap again. 
get on a roadmap, you see the features we're working on, what's coming up, what Docker's thinking about, and you can join the conversation there. And we truly do want to hear from you, so please do that. And real quickly, I'll, I'll put it in there now so, so I don't forget at the end here, but um, there's our fact. So, you know, if you haven't, it, it's very, very thorough. So please go out there and read those. Get your, we spent a lot of time trying to anticipate questions. Um, so please read those. If it's not clear, please reach out and feel free to reach out anytime. But if it's not clear and not getting your questions answered, do reach out, right? Uh, either tweet at us, go into the Slack, um, on the roadmap. Uh, and we will definitely try and get your questions answered. Let's see if we have any more questions in um, in the chat here. Oh, are you gonna? You know you're gonna get one of these. Thank you, Tim. I see Kubernetes in the plans. Does that also mean Docker Swarm is still being supported? Ben, I think that he's gonna take on Swarm bits wholly and continue. No, don't. No, I'm just kidding, no, by the way. Don't put me on the internet. Quote me on any of that. Go ahead, Ben. Sorry. So Docker Swarm was transitioned over to Mirantis um, about 18 months ago now. Um, I believe those guys are maintaining it and have a plan around that. So you want to go and check that out. Um, ah, SJ just responded with the same thing. <laughs> yeah, lo I love Swarm. Swarm's awesome, right? If, if you're still using it, reach out to Mirantis. Right? Swar Swarm is a great orchestrator, 100%. Awesome. Did you guys see any other questions in there? So uh, I saw one about building building the Mac uh, CLI um, from GitHub. I, I think, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you can build it, uh, but I'm not sure if it'll run independently. Um, so I never can, tried. Uh, so yeah, you can just run the binary on Mac. Um, I have no idea if the repo contains instructions to, to build it from the repo, um, but yeah, I, I guess I'd say like if you're curious or if there aren't, um, it's it's an open source project um, or it's an open project. Like if there aren't instructions for building it on Mac, Mikael, um, go and open a PR, propose some, get it working, and um, contribute it. Please feel free. Okay, sorry, just reading reading down through. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and two, I, I would also say if you're we have some questions in can you you know about building the cli and can i then just connect it um you know feel free to to set up a vm and try and connect and do all those things but we'd love to hear from you right we'd love to hear the problems you're having and why you would want to go that route instead of using desktop we we don't sit in a closed tower and close the doors and only have internal conversations right we want to we want to understand the community i know i sound like a broken record i, I apologize but we really do yep. um there was a question about if there would be any interruptions if they don't get their their license in order by by the end of uh, January, um, uh, twenty twenty two. No, <laughs> there will be no interruptions. Um, we we trust uh, our, our our community. Uh, we we trust the, the larger companies will um, uh, do the right thing or otherwise contact sales if you know. Maybe they need a little bit more time, <laughs> um, but uh, we we trust our customers to um, do the right thing there, and there, there's no change. Um, we, that there's no hard enforcement there. Awesome. Okay, so yes, I, we were, we were talking about this offline, but uh, let me hide that. But I had a question to the PM team, right? So, yep, I work at a company. Uh, they're they're a business customer Docker, and I'm restricted while I'm at business. But am I still then allowed to work on my other projects? Right? Do I have to go buy a license for everything else? And the answer is no. Right? If you have side projects, you have open source projects you contribute to non-commercial open source projects. Right? Um, if you're being paid to work on an open source project, then you're going to need a license. Is that is that correct? Mark? Make sure. I'm yeah. Correct. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean it. It, assuming you don't qualify under any of the other exceptions like that your company is, is smaller than 250 and smaller than the 10 million in annual revenue um, then then yeah we, we would expect uh, for your usage of um, docker desktop uh, for for kind of commercial purposes at this larger company um, that that uh, then then we expect expect this fair exchange of value <laughs> yeah. and for, for your company to pay for a subscription for you. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Well, we, uh, we're about out of time. 
Um, any any other closing thoughts, comments, concerns? Uh, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Really appreciate you, everybody showing up, asking questions. Again, continue the conversation um, with us online, on Twitter, on our Slack channel. Let me put that up again. So if you go to the community site, you can find there uh, all of our ways to get plugged into the community. So we have uh, a community Slack, a discourse, those type of things. We also have a, a ton of meetups around the world. Uh, some are coming back in person, but of course not everybody. And it's a little bit hit and miss, but there's a lot of virtual uh, meetups. We do have a community all hands coming up here next month. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. Um, and then also plug into, uh, we have a new a newish website called contribute.docker.com. So that's run by our community, um, supported by us. There's a ton of great content out there. You'll get a lot of support uh, on how to become a community leader, um, how to get great content to run meetups, all those type of things. Um, and then also to uh, check out the fact. So again, a lot of questions in there, uh, a lot of time and effort was put in to answer those thoroughly. Please look there. If you, if you can't find your answer, then again, reach out. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Again, thank you everybody for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Um, appreciate all the fans out there and our customers supporting us and uh, the community. Community be, has been great. Um, thank you guys for joining me today and answering all the questions. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Thank you for all having right. us. Awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. Everybody have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.